So if we're all set, ready to go, uh, first of all, thanks very much for everyone coming along at short notice this afternoon. We're obviously here in uh, reference to the press release that we put out, which is uh, two of our players have recently tested positive to performance enhancing drugs, which we were notified by ASADA. Very quickly, uh, this afternoon I wanted to read out the statement that we've already um, put out just to cover off the details. And I think it's appropriate due to the sensitivity of what we're dealing with that I read the statement uh, just to keep it tight because I am uh, bound by quite uh, tight confidentiality parameters through the Players Association, ASADA, etc. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions at the end for myself and Neil. I'm sure there'll be far more questions than there will be answers and I just ask you to respect that um, while we're here this afternoon we do so knowing that we are very, very restricted in what we're able to deal with. So there may be quite a few of the questions where we literally say we might love to answer uh, but we simply can't and we've got uh, legal advice on that before we throw it open. Um, we're also here because it's really important for us as a club to be 100% transparent with this as an issue. We believe that's in the best interests of the club, the players, definitely our supporters and uh, for the AFL industry. You know, this is a major issue. It's also really important that um, we talk about this and, and as we've seen today that the players are named so that there's not a question mark on the other players on the list, which has quite often happened, and some of you in the room would know there's actually been players' names thrown around that aren't part of it, and that was starting to uh, drift through. Um, and another key part of this is in the week before the first game, we needed to be able to address this as a club, with the players, with the coaches, um, as much as we could, so that um, Nathan, the coaches and the players could move on and actually start dealing and preparing for the Brisbane game. So that's, that's why we have pushed since finding out about this on Friday to have it dealt with um, this afternoon. So I'll quickly read through the statement and then we'll throw it open to questions. So the Collingwood Football Club was advised on Friday by ASADA that two of its players, Lachlan Keefe and Josh Thomas, are under investigation. The pair have returned a positive A sample to clenbuterol, a substance prohibited under the WADA anti-doping code. The second or B sample are still to be analysed and it's important at this stage that we remember that there is no breach unless the B sample is positive. At this point the players are not conveyed anything to the club to explain the positive result. Both have sought independent legal advice through the Players Association which we support it's important for Collingwood to communicate to its supporters that the club has conducted a forensic audit of its dietary and nutrition program and is completely satisfied the positive results is in no way connected to that program. The, Coll the Collingwood dietary and nutrition program is tightly controlled. Everything is recorded and it's ov overseen by an independent integrity officer. Collingwood is wholly committed to upholding the WADI anti-doping policy and the cause of eradicating performance enhancing drugs in sport. Collingwood's hoping to meet the players uh, during this week to have discussions with both players and their representatives to look at um, whether it's appropriate for all parties for them to continue to train and be down at the Westpac Centre and we'll um, all parties will keep you updated on that. But it's really important that we also put on the table that while we're dealing with this as a club, we are also throwing all our support and resources around the players and what they require and we're in constant communication with the Players Association and the players' representatives. So um, that's pretty much what the straight statement that went out today. And I throw it open to you now for questions. What was your reaction? Uh, well, I got a call on Friday morning and uh, f to take that call from someone from ASADA and they started off with what the, um, the charges were and then when they rolled out who the two players were, uh, I must admit 
I was uh, pretty devastated because we're actually talking about two of the highest quality um, young men as part of our program. So I think everyone would have felt the same, surprised and uh, quite devastated. And uh, like I said, that was Friday morning and then things unfolded from there in contact with the players and the processes rolled out. Do you think they deliberately took this break? Oh, look, you know, I'm not here to... I, I haven't had the conversations with the players to ask them that question or push that. Um, you all, spoken to them No, I've spoken to the players and it was very much about um, sitting down with ASADA. This is a really serious uh, process and my role on Friday was to make sure that we got hold of the players, found the players, linked them up with ASADA, um, allowed ASADA to go through the process, which we 100% support. We then uh, made sure that we worked with the players, their player managers and the Players Association to make sure that they could make the decisions they had to on Friday, which was about getting legal advice rather than starting with uh, uh, big in-depth conversations about it. Do you believe that they ingested or whatever this drug while you were on your, your pre-season test? All I know that is in the test, the only facts that I have is in the test they tested positive to the substance that I've said. I don't have any details um, apart from, as we said in the statement, when we spoke to the players and we said, can you see any reason for this positive test? And they both answered no. That's, that's all I'm dealing with at this stage. Gary, are you baffled by the fact that um, your audit of your dietary and nutrition program has given that to you all clear? So whatever they use well, um, I don't know if I would say I'm baffled by it. What, the only thing that we can control is what actually happens as part of our program. While the players are here at the Westpac Centre or are under the guidance of our programs, but there is a massive amount of time. We have over 40 players walking around away from the club having to make decisions on a daily basis. And that's something that um, you know they have to be responsible for. But again, any any time you have a situation like we're dealing with here, is uh, there's certainly a lot of people disappointed. So, okay. but, it, but it does seem as though they have gone even at this early stage and before you do an investigation or whatever. It does seem as though they've gone out of the club to take something. Like yeah, but I, I'm not dealing with what seems to be, and I've you know I've had all sorts of rumours and stories and this is the likely outcomes. Re really with so much going on all I can deal with is the facts and the facts is the positive test. ASADA now investigates. Uh, we're certainly not trying to investigate this at the level. I mean ASADA is resourced up and they have the, the people, the processes and the information to take this forward and, and we'll be supporting their process rather than going through a separate one. Have you had your no, no, we, we under the circumstances, uh, when we spoke to the players, I, I would say they, they look close to being shock on Friday. You've got to keep in mind, these are two young men that were at home and uh, had a sad knock on their door. Um, both Neil and myself spoke to them shortly after and uh, the only way I could describe it would be uh, quite shell-shocked, and um, so, no, we weren't pushing for all the questions you might calmly sit here and think that we would be pushing for. It was more about supporting the players, make sure that they had the right people around and make sure that they had that representation. And, and I think all parties, including the AFL, um, handled a really difficult situation of the day really well and in coordination. Yeah, so you had your access to those players since you haven't been able to talk to them since then? Um, well, that's right. So what the players have chosen to do, and as I said, we support, is to get the support of their managers, the Players Association. The Players Association then have teed up legal representation, and that's where they've been spending their time. Uh, we've certainly made ourselves available if they want to talk to us, and do they need any more support? But I think they're well supported at the moment, and all we've left them with is the fact that this week would uh, we would like to catch up and and have those conversations, but they need to first get their legal advice before we have those conversations. What have you put into place, Yuri, the integrity officer, since obviously the situation? What are the layers you've got to safeguard yourself? 
Well, the layers are, you know, we, we could sit here for quite some time talking about that because like most clubs, uh, we activated a very experienced, independent uh, uh, integrity officer and a, a guy named Robert Cockrell who um, after pretty well within the first couple of days of the Essendon saga, he was activated to do a full in-depth audit of the entire football program and he got the cooperation of every single person there. Um, uh, that report, which was in-depth and went to the board, was uh, certainly said that there was no issues for us as a club and that we'd been handling our um, nutrition and diet programs, what he described as conservatively but uh, highly professionally. Um, and then we got him in again, briefed him on Friday once this incident happened to say, we, we want you to re-look at the program and give us any feedback or, or advice. And again, uh, that, that's come back with a 100% clearance, which is why we can both sit here today and say confidently this is not something that has come through our program. What's the worst case, worst case scenario? Have you looked ahead? Is it too poor to Obama, you can. Well, we haven't, we haven't really gone that far. Um, we really feel how, how challenging this is for the players, but we're not looking forward, looking that far forward. We're, we're hoping there's a good outcome, but we're accepting at the moment they're not going to be available and it could be for some time and we'll just see what happens. But we've got to be as supportive as we can for them, recognising that obviously they're responsible for their own behaviour. But they both, as uh, Gary said, that they were, it was disbelief of both of them. They both said, we haven't done this. Now, who knows how it all happened and whatever. We, we, we know no more than that. What did they say, No, I said it was disbelief. They, yeah. they, they just said, no, we haven't done this. Oh, so they said they haven't done it? Yeah. So, Glen Buterol, have you investigated what sort of drug that is? Oh, yeah, we, we know what it is, and that's which is one of the reasons we think, why would they? Where how would they? they, how, would they how, just, would, how would they get that in their system? No, I don't know. Knowing yeah. what yeah. you know, what... This drug, yes. Well, they would have to actively be pursuing it and wanting it. I mean, if you look at both these players, neither of them, it doesn't make any sense for either of them to use this because they're both quite lean, which has been unusual for some of us, but they're, they're very <coughs> lean. They don't, they don't need it. They're very fit. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but yeah, they, we're not making any... Have you got a logical answer I have, or I have, explanation? No, I have no... But w when we talk to them, we'll, we just need to talk through that a little bit more. I and mean, clearly they'll be doing that with their direct... The representatives, but you know we're still very associated with them. We want to help them, so we will be talking in the next couple of days. Is it fair or unfair? Is it fair? Is it fair that people out here reading this, listening to this at home, right now, going, how in the hell does that get in their body if they didn't put it in themselves? Oh, I, th I think we, we, that's, we say the, we say yeah. the same thing. Yeah, but yeah. I think that's a natural thing. But I mean, we can all sit down and we can come up with theories, and and I've certainly over the last couple of days heard a whole array of theories on what is uh, probable, what, how this would be likely, that would be unlikely. Really, it's irrelevant. This is why we have ASADA. This is why there's investigation. This is why we support the investigation rather than go about it separately, um, because we're not going to have the data. We're not going to have the information that ASADA's got to get to the bottom of it. So really, what we think and the rumours and hypotheticals that have been thrown to us, to be quite honest, are irrelevant. And with everything we're dealing with, we simply don't have the energy or uh, headspace to explore all those scenarios. Can you clarify your last comment? In your conversations with the players, they said we have not done this. Yeah. So that's, that's clear. That's clear everywhere. They're, they're claiming that uh, they're not guilty. Are you worried, guys, that there could be more cases? I mean, obviously, you didn't see this coming, and it's uh, been unusual. Well, yeah. well uh, the first question that I asked uh, Asada is when we went through the fact that there's two players, is there any more? That's, that's the obvious uh, question to ask and they said no. So again, I, I can only go off what they told us in that conversation. Yeah. What about a timeline of it? Uh, we've got Brian Crowley eight months after a suspension or after, after a test. Any idea of whether this might take all season to get to a tribunal if the B sample's positive? Well, again, we're just dealing with the facts is the B, uh, there is no breach unless the B sample comes up with exactly the same readings. And uh, again, we're, 
everyone's assumed to be innocent until that uh, plays out. Um, the timing of that's controlled by ASADA and then the result of that test will then dictate uh, some of the steps from there. Also, the way the players and their legal representatives handle and, and what their outcomes are. So as Neil said, we've, we've had a very short conversation, we've been given no plausible reason why it's happened, and now the players with their representatives have got to decide um, how this rolls out from their perspective as well. So the point is there is a whole lot of variables that could um, dictate how short or long this actually takes to play out. And again, I stress that Nathan has made it very clear to the players what they control is how they prepare and play for the weekend and uh, potentially the games after that, and that's where their focus is. Yeah, no, well, um, Lockie's been a little bit um, injured over the last few weeks, but he's done a pretty reasonable pre season, and um, Josh has been playing quite well, so. And they're both, both going sorry, okay. I'm sorry, Gary, I was just going to ask, you're the biggest brand, the biggest franchise in Australian sport. What, what does this do? Um, well, it's it's not ideal. Uh, pretty well every aspect when you have a situation like this, just to be dealing it before we even get to the outcome. The fact that we're sitting in here um, having these conversations, and our supporters and potential members are looking at this, you know, can have a, an effect. It's um, sponsors. We we have to ring our sponsors and talk this through with them. So there are big off-field. Um, commercial impacts on having to deal with a situation like this and as we said one of the other big focuses we've got within our football program we have a uh, player group now all of a sudden uh, know that two of their teammates are being investigated and and the potential sanctions out of this are serious. Who spoke to, who spoke to the players on Friday? Both of us. Both of us yeah. did, you know, did, did you believe Did you believe what they said? Uh, you know what, when you go through these conversations, I, I'm not, it might sound strange, but in the circumstance, in the circumstance when you've got a young player coming in and literally a SADA is in the office as they walk up, this is about, um, you don't have the opportunity to sit down and discuss this or integrate it. It, it is literally about the player coming in and they did coming say through they, to. They did say it. Yeah. In, so in a very... Said, we've got no idea. Did you believe them when they said that? Well, yeah, I did, yes. Yeah. Why well, wouldn't I? What about the contamination? That, that, that's not saying anything about the process. I mean, the, the, Asada, the Asada process is... I mean, it's pretty hard to say it doesn't work. Yeah. But when the boys come in and say, didn't well, they, they, were, they were dumbfounded by it. So, obviously, but I think when you... there's a lot of work to be done within mm. them to, to know what actually happened. We, we honestly don't know. Mm. No, they don't. But I think they did. They have. They're both from Queensland. They both came yeah, at the same time. Yeah. So they've been pretty good mates. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saddened by where Queensland is at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, on a, a broad scale, uh, you know, there's no doubt as we come into the first round, I think the entire footy world would, would be hoping that we're actually, the, the papers are full of the new stars that are coming through. We'd love to be talking about that in this press conference rather than the issues we're dealing with. Um, uh, so I, I would say pretty well everyone right at the moment um, would like to be co focusing on the game and not these issues like we're, we're talking about. No, no one wins out of these things. Bertie, how much have you drilled into the last the few days before that test in terms of contamination? Everyone talks about this issue with Chinese meats and those kind of things. How specific have you been with the Again, uh, that, that's up to Asada to investigate those things. We, we can we can get our head around the possibilities and what the product is, and and um, you know for our own interest. But I do stress that we support Asada's investigation. We uh, support the anti-doping code. We are a club that very strongly has taken a hard line. Um, in support of the rules and regu regulations and the integrity of the game um, and we're certainly not going to do anything else except support ASADA to investigate. They've got the resources, they've got the expertise and, and they need to work through this process. Does it, does it just murky things for you guys a little bit, the fact that there's two here? I mean, one's bad enough, but two, so... And if, this, mate. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so the fact that what I was getting at is that there's two. So if someone, had, like Michael Rogers, had inadvertently eaten some meat or something like that within there, then that's a, that's a one-off thing. But to actually have two guys... I think Michael Rogers did eat with another bloke, which... Not, okay. not, not yeah. that that's it. Whatever. Well, mm. I mean, but it's all a bit of a moot point from well, our well, point well, of view. Well, I think in the end, and this is what we've got to rely on, in the end, ASADA will get to a point where we'll all understand exactly what happened, and I think then it'll make sense. All of these things, uh, we're not trying to make sense of such a small amount of information that we've got. In the end, I'm sure it'll make sense, and that's what the job for ASADA is to get to that point. Bernie, you seem to like to, to concentrate on the football, and you've said that that's a priority, but you know, you've got a key defender and a, you know, another player. It seems extraordinary. Yeah, but, you know, we've all been around footy clubs to see. We've, we've got a list of players. Whether we lost players through injury or unav unavailability is, uh, you know, Nathan's already spoken to the players. Um, when we spoke to the players this morning because of the confidentiality, we, we literally could only just tell them that these two players wouldn't be available um, for this week, wouldn't be playing, and you just need to trust that the two of us are working through that process um, and that you guys have just got to focus on what you control, which is preparing and playing uh, against Brisbane on the weekend, first game, important we get a good start, and I see no reason why um, you know they won't roll that out and be prepared. No, I think we need to talk to them about that and see where it goes. It'll be a bit of what they want to do as well. I mean, it depends on, I mean, what what kind of how they're treated by. I mean, if they've got someone at their front door with a camera every day and those sorts of things, that will be a real challenge for them. We're hoping, obviously, that doesn't happen. But we we, we haven't been in front of them to know what they want to do and and what their agents want to do and what the, even the PA wants us to do. We, we've we've never been in this position before, uh, and what, whatever's best we'll do. Um, whether do they come around and keep training and feel as though they're, you know, they're not even part of the group? Is that best for them or not? We, we'll have to work through that. We, we haven't made a decision. Gary, this, this decision was it to, for the two players' names to be confronted? Was it, was it the players' decision? Uh, that was in consultation with the AFL, with the players' association, with uh, the players' legal representatives. We we all decided. Um, you know, I don't mind saying that from a club perspective. Uh, we, we worked on this on the weekend to be able to talk about it and uh, publicly um, announce this for the good of our supporters and all the um, other stakeholders that I mentioned before, but we also respected that the players needed to work through their processes and the AFL ha had to be a, um, aware as well. We actually can't announce this as part of the confidentiality by ourselves. We actually have to wait until another party announces it, which was the AFL, and th that's why uh, once the AFL announced things, we can roll it out. It's not at our discretion to roll it out otherwise. Did, 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 what, what did the players think of this? Were they, did they agree with this? Uh, well, we, we were dealing with the players' representatives on this, and um, they agreed to all the wordings of the AFL statement and the club statement. Is it possible not to be able to talk to your own players? Oh, no, we, we can talk to them. We have spoken. Well, because they've been talking to their legal rep, and they said, let's do that first, and we can talk to them. We're not that fussed about that. We'll talk to them. We'll be talking. The earliest you'll talk to them is Tuesday. No, no, we spoke to them on Friday. Yeah. Their legal representatives weren't available on the weekend. And in a lot of ways, this is a very serious issue, though. We're not, we're not talking about the fact that we heard some of the players were out having a drink on Friday night. It's a very serious issue, and we support the fact that they need to get legal advice. They needed time to process and make decisions, and they still do. So we've got to respect this. This is two key members of our club, two people that we, we don't want them to feel like they're under an unreasonable pressure and, and they had some circumstances where they couldn't get to it as quickly as what we dealt with. We've been in constant contact with their agents, so it's, oh. it's not as though we oh. have well, to get oh, yeah, 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 that's right. we're, we're more than happy with that. Are you concerned, Gary, just quickly, how long this is going to, to drag out? Well, this is the estimate scenario drag out for a very long time. Uh, are you concerned that the time frame that this could take and how long it could be a disruption? Yeah, that, that's... Um, I suppose the broader question is it's, it's really important how 
we as a club handle it. And um, we, we're not going to be able to control how long it goes on for. So we can only control how we handle it, which is why we're here today. We will be transparent throughout the whole process as much as we can. We'll keep our supporters informed and we'll do everything possible to continue to win on field while we're going through this. And that's, uh, as we've seen with Essendon, um, some ways the greatest support to these um, investigations is if you're winning on field. So it, it is a concern. The things we can control is how we handle it. And uh, we've got a good team and we've got good advisors. And uh, we're, in a lot of ways, we'll be playing it as it unfolds on a day-to-day -day basis. So if that's, hopefully we've sort of pretty well covered everything else. Uh, like I said, we've tried to be um, transparent today within our, our restrictions. So thanks very much for coming along.